Hello everybody, this is the World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa's Health Spotlight podcast. My name is Catherine Adams, tuning in from Brazzaville, Republic of Congo. Today, we will be focusing on COVID-19 and health innovations in Africa. The COVID-19 pandemic has spurred the creation of more than 120 health technology innovations in Africa, from WhatsApp chatbots in South Africa, self-diagnostic tools in Angola, and contact tracing apps in Ghana, nearly 60% of the innovations are rooted in information and communications tech, while a quarter are based on 3D printing and 11% on robotics. Dr. Machidi Somoweti is the WHO Regional Director for Africa. COVID-19 is one of the most serious health challenges in a generation, but it's also an opportunity to drive forward innovation, ingenuity, and entrepreneurship in life-saving health technologies. We analyzed 1,000 health technologies developed worldwide in response to COVID-19 and found that Africa accounts for almost 13% of the innovations designed to enhance key areas like surveillance, contact tracing, community engagement, treatment, laboratory systems, and infection prevention and control. And almost half of Africa's innovations were concentrated though in four countries, in South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, and Rwanda. Dr. Ola Brown is the founder of the Flying Doctors Healthcare Investment Company in Nigeria. First innovation that um, we came up with um, was a testing booth that separated the tester from the patient. And we've rolled that out now in eight states. And each one of those testing booths has the capacity to do about 200 um, tests per day. And we've not seen any infections when those testing booths have been used. In Zimbabwe, the Vaxi Global Travel Health Consultancy is fighting fake vaccination certificates with Frontier Technology. Dr. Integrity Mshashesi is head of innovation at Vaxi Global. As we've seen countries opening up, most um, African countries, they require the COVID-free certificates before the point of um, departure. But there's a thriving black market of these fake COVID-19 certificates. And it's difficult for the health authorities to verify the authenticity of each and every certificate using the traditional signature and and stamp. Uh, So that's where Vaxi Global is coming in to solve this problem using um, a decentralized online record keeping system that is built on uh, blockchain technology. Uh, So we had uh, built this system uh, with support of WHO Africa Innovation Department uh, to combat counterfeit uh, yellow fever certificates. And now with COVID-19, we've adjusted the system also to cater for the COVID-19 certificates where laboratories enter the COVID results of the travelers and the QR code. So when they get to the port health officials, they simply scan the QR code to see the authenticity of each and every certificate. WHO is helping take Vaxi Global system to the next level. Dr. Modric Chibi leads WHO's work in innovation in Africa. We are supporting it and we are thinking of even broadening the scope of this very innovative tool, especially to support immunization campaigns Mm -hmm. happening in Ghana, in DRC, in in Nigeria. We are thinking of uh, digitalizing some of uh, these certificates, the yellow fever certificate. Mm -hmm. So we are moving from an analog type of uh, certificate to a digital certificate, which I think is going to be a flagship initiative for WHO. Niger has some good examples on what governments can do to boost innovation. And Dr. Ibrahima Gwemba Sedo is Niger's Minister of Health, Special Advisor to the President and CEO of the National Agency for Information Society. We've been working to introduce technology and innovation into the health sector for a few years now, including telemedicine, setting up platforms for collaboration between the different health actors and health promotion activities. In addition, as we are one of the countries where certain aspects of health such as infant mortality, maternal mortality are very high, and we are a country where a significant part of the population does not live in urban areas, it was important to see how technology could allow us to provide help to this important section of the population. So the Ministry of Health and our Information Society Agency worked to build the ecosystem with young people. We set up regular competitions, notably a competition that is a first in the sub-region called Iitakara. 
which helps us to find innovations and talent and has been going on for three years. In 2018, during the second edition, for example, the winners developed an application to detect malaria without a blood test using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So since then, we've been working with him with the support from WHO to try to perfect these solutions. Of course, as in many countries, COVID has been a real wake-up call. And of course, perhaps one of the most important events was the organization of what we called Corona Athlon, which is specifically dedicated to Corona. WHO Africa's Dr. Modric Chibi again. So WHO in the African region has been uh, quite active in promoting development of innovation for COVID-19 especially. As you know, we have carried out a number of uh, initiatives that include uh, hosting hackathons, uh, hosting uh, innovation webinars, launching the Innovation Challenge. And through these uh, initiatives, uh, we have seen and we have identified and where necessary supported through seed funding, uh, further development of these innovations for scaling up in the region. So why am I emphasizing scaling? Because that's the bottleneck that we've been seeing. Through the Innovation Challenge, our youth have demonstrated their creativity, yeah. uh, coming up with all these uh, sophisticated innovation. But if you look down the line, uh, some of them, they have not been scaled up simply because of that bottleneck. And in most cases, it's to do with uh, the ecosystem that governments themselves should create and the private sector also to come on board. WHO's Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Machidiso Moeti. We know that investing in innovation yields tremendous dividends and that untapped talent and energy abounds in African countries. Our regional committee for Africa, meaning the Minister of Health's annual meeting, endorsed a strategy to scale up health innovations in Africa, recommending greater investment in high quality health systems powered by continuous innovation to respond to changing population health needs.